My husband, Sean, and I have three beautiful children, a daughter, and two sons. They are raised much like Sean and myself were raised, which is in a fairly strict household where manners and clean bedrooms reign supreme. Our children address us with ma'am and sir. They write eloquent thank you notes. They do daily chores, and on a good night, they don't smack at the dinner table. Outside of our house, they carry themselves well. Thankfully, we have had few discipline problems at school, and our children tend to get asked back over to friends' houses more than once, which is, in my opinion, a clear indication that they can't be all that bad. When our children were younger, we did as our parents did us. We spanked them when they got out of line. Our friends came up with a phrase for the Wessel family form of discipline, quick and painful. <laughs> we still, to this day, consider that acknowledgement one of the highest compliments we have ever been paid. <laughs> so far, we are less than a year into the teenage years as parents, but Sean and I feel pretty confident that we have established a firm foundation for our children so that they will grow up to be moral, productive members of society who will one day be gleefully removed from our payroll. <laughs> Sean and I have two other children who were homeschooled and are of the furry, four-legged variety. Our eldest dog is named Milo and is a Shima, which is a cross between a Shih Tzu and a Maltese. He is three and a half years old with a fighting weight of 10 pounds and has been known to bite chunks out of defenseless boxwood bushes while passing the house of his neighborhood nemeses. Our youngest dog is Champ, a golden retriever. Champ is two and a half years old and weighs in around 70 pounds. He is tall and skinny and so far is the only mammal I know of who gets an erection while taking the annual Christmas card picture. <laughs> Many South Hill residents, including our lovely hosts for this evening, Stacy and Elise, have seen me walking my dogs up to the local elementary school at the end of the day to pick up my children. My dogs have established quite a reputation for themselves. I'll sum up this reputation quite simply for you. One arm is attached to a leash with Cujo's last revenge at the end. The other arm is attached to a leash with Pee Wee Herman, high on laughing gas. <laughs> I'll let you guess which leash goes with which dog. It's not like we haven't tried to train up our dogs like we train up our children. We even went so far as to use an electric shock collar on Milo to keep him from barking at every man, dog, cat, bird, postal worker, squirrel, or turkey on our walking route. I would push the button with the strongest power surge with a vengeance while Milo would hunker down and just take it. <laughs> as soon as I released the button, he would resume his tirade. Champ can't seem to learn to heal on a walk. We have tried everything from the gentle leader to the metal choke collar. Champ, who is obviously training for the Iditarod, must not need to breathe in the process because the choke collar was useless. He even has a permanent line across the bridge of his nose from the imprint of the gentle leader since he pulled with such gusto. So I ask myself, how can it be that I'm a halfway decent mother of humans, but I suck at mothering canines? <laughs> When Milo comes charging through the doggy door after chowing down on a pile of Champ's poop with a, <laughs> with a fresh coat of brown staining his white beard, <laughs> do I let him jump into my arms and lick my neck, ears, and cheeks? Why, yes. <laughs> when my children were younger and picked their boogers, would I let them touch anything, much less me, before they had washed their hands with soap as long as it took to sing the ABCs? Hell no! 
Do I laugh and cheer when Champ and Milo chase each other around our dining room table at lightning speeds, narrowly missing my china cabinet with each rotation? Do I let my children even think of running through the house, much less the one room with the most breakables? I think you get my point. What is a mother to do who realizes that she lets her dogs get away with things she wouldn't let her children dream of getting away with? Should I be stricter with my dogs or less strict with my children? I can guarantee I know which my children would pick. <laughs> I need to do some more self-evaluation and perhaps seek the help of a trained professional, one for me and one for my dogs. In the meantime, I will go back to my house and clean up the usual places where Milo marks his spot and live through yet another awkward moment of Champ headbutting the crotch of the next adult who graces our front entryway. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, right? 